I've, I've known Jim and Chris Gold for, for several years. Uh, they, they taught me, well, actually, I, I, we were both at a seminar learning about Camtasia, which is a program for doing screen recordings and animations and, and things like that, as well as uh, video editing. It's a pretty good video editor. And they run a, a program where they go around the country in the back of an RV. Their RV has scaled up and scaled down over time. Uh, but they, they have a mobile attack studio, and they have a studio at home, which we're going to see a little bit of, of both of those things. So I thought that they would be good people to talk about how you put together a video webinar studio uh, on, and I'm, I've asked them to think about a, a couple of uh, price points, because Jim apparently has spent more money than God on, on the uh, the Geeks on Tour home studio. Uh, that, that's, that's the sense I get from hearing Chris talk about it at any rate. And so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna hear about what you, what you might do to get more professional and how you present in online video or online meetings and what the basic elements of that are, particularly light, camera, and sound. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim and Chris, who will lead us through the center of this meeting. And we, we talked about doing what? Maybe 20, 25 minutes presentation and then go to Q&A? That sounds good. Perfect. So Arlene, maybe you can start giving them warnings at 20 minutes. You know, give them a green light at 20 minutes, yellow at 23. Uh, read at 25 and then we'll, we'll, we'll spend a few minutes on Q&A and then go to table topics. Sounds good. All right, I am going to mute myself and shut up. Okay. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. We are living in such an exciting time. I mean, if you have a message that you would like to deliver to a potential worldwide audience, all you need is a phone, a smartphone, and an internet connection. All you'd have to do is turn it into selfie mode, tap the go live button on either Facebook or YouTube, and you are broadcasting on the web potentially to anybody in the world. So we call that webcasting. I still often call it broadcasting, that's kind of, and that is a live technology. Now let me show you a little bit. I'm gonna share my screen. And we have been giving a webcast, a live webcast every week called What Does This Button Do? Because we are in technology training. We've been in technology training since 1983 and we like to do it so much and now we have this opportunity to do it to a potentially worldwide audience. We are now on, we just gave episode number 129, 129 times we've done this. It's a weekly technology class called What Does This Button Do? And it is a free on YouTube. It's recorded live and we started back in June of 2014. You can imagine that we have learned a bit in that time. We've taken some lumps and bruises and we are now mostly having fun with it. So the minimum requirements, all you have to have, as I mentioned, is a phone. And you can, so all you want to do is talk to an audience. All you need is a phone. This picture shows that we are in our RV and we literally just pulled off at a rest area because we had come to the appointed time where we promised to do a live session. And we turned on the phone that's in its little holder on the dashboard, and we tapped go live on Facebook. So notice that the light is in our faces. That works out just great from the windshield of the, of the RV. So lights, camera, sound. You can spend a lot of money or nothing at all. So I am in my office right now. This is my studio. Jim is downstairs in the room that he has totally taken over <laughs> for our studio. But 
uh, if you just follow some basic precepts, for example, the light is on my face now, and it's dark behind me so I don't have to worry too much about the background. Now, if this was in the daytime, there's a window over here and that would be too much light coming behind me. So I would try to change the position of the laptop so that the light was coming in my face. That's all. I'm using the camera that is built in. I make sure to take a little cloth and clean the lens because it can get greasy. I think it's good to have it at eye level, and it would not be if my lap if my computer was on the desk. So here is my jerry rigged. <laughs> I just got a box, and I set the laptop on top of the box in order to get the camera at eye level. And then sound. You don't necessarily need anything, especially when you're using a phone. What are phones for? They're for sound. So. But if there is anything else going on around you, then you want to make sure that you don't get echo and feedback. And uh, so at least a, an earpiece so that the sound isn't coming out of the speakers of your laptop and then going right back in to the microphone. And that's all I was going to use, but Jim said no. He he was afraid that I was going to interfere with him downstairs, so he made me put on a, a full headset. All right, with that just introduction on that you don't need to spend any money, I am going to show you, let me, <clears throat> um, it can get, so, but with our show, we have two people, two computers, two microphones. It's not just one person talking to the audience, so how do we not get echo and feedback? We also want to show slides on a computer. How do we switch back and forth between showing our faces and showing slides? And we like to do demos. How do we show mobile devices on the same show? For that, it takes magic. So let me introduce you to my wizard of Oz. We're going to pull back the curtains and he's going to show you a little bit about the kind of magic that he does in our studio. My husband, my Mr. Geek, Jim Gould. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Chris. All right, are we on me now? I, it's hard to tell with this presentation software, but one of the things that I really wanted to talk about today is the difference between presentations and, and conferencing. Now, what we have here with this Zoom technology and Ring Central, it works great. But we need to know how we look. We really want to look our best and we want to sound our best when we do a presentation. If all we're doing is a conference call where there's a bunch of us in there, we can stand out by having a better picture and a better sound system. So I'm going to talk about some of that as we go through here. Let's see if this works for me. All right. I have to find that screen. Warning, the things we are about to show you took us many years and more than a couple of dollars. So it's just important to know that this stuff, if you want to do it right, it can cost a little bit of money. As Chris said earlier, you don't need to do, spend any money. Just a little bit of thought in what you have here will make a big difference. So as she said, we started with only a laptop computer and some smartphones, and so can you. This is our home studio. How long has it taken you to put this all together, Jim? How old am I now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I keep changing it. We have a, a new addition. We have this green screen. I just painted the wall with this green. We have a green screen over here. We have our sign. Okay, Google, turn on set lights. Lights. Camera. Okay, turning on the set lights. 
All right. So we have top, bottom, front, side. Bandwidth is the most important thing for any of these technologies to work. You have to have plenty of bandwidth, and if you don't have the bandwidth, don't even try doing the webcast. Upload speeds are much more important than download speeds when you're doing a streaming connection. And we say that at least three megabits per second upload is the minimum you're going to need. There are places on the web where you can test your speed. If you don't have good enough speed, there are some things that you can do to decrease your bandwidth, but typically you're going to want to have the best bandwidth possible. So at the studio in our RV, we have lights. And they are just clipped on to different places on the wall. And there's also a light shining on the photo box for purposes of lighting up my phone demonstration. Anything else about lights? Well, we have the... Uh the Logitech camera on a tripod right there. That's that's our main There's camera. camera. And then the software, Chris has her computer, I have my computer, and I handle the switching for the audience. Chris handles the switching for the either the light box or the presentation, the slideshow that we do for everyone. So for this. That, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, so yes. this, this is where <laughs> I show the phone because this document camera is connected to my computer and I can, on the computer screen, show what is being seen by the document camera. Cool. So sound is really the next most important thing after bandwidth. You need to have a quiet space. You want to have no traffic, waterfalls, barking dogs, or cranking up diesel engines. And earbuds are a headset to separate your microphone and speakers. Echo and feedback can be a problem if you're using speakers that are separate. We've run into that problem again and again. I use a lavalier microphone and a mixing board. Sound is the most important. Yeah, so I have this Behringer sound board where I can put in a couple of microphones and that's important because we have two computers but we only want one a microphone input and I can handle two microphones and it goes into the USB that goes into the computer and I have controls over that. We have one input for sound with two microphones. So do you uh, advise that people do this? Oh yeah, it's good for the economy. <laughs> <laughs> and then lights. So you have sound, you have the, you have a good bandwidth connection. The next thing that you really want to check is your lights. You want to have plenty of light because the way these cameras work is they're not really good in low light, but if you give it added light, you'll get a much better picture no matter what your subject is. Studio lighting typically is a basic three-point lighting setup you want to have your camera set up in front of your subject. You have a key light. That's the bright light that's, that's lighting the subject. You want to have a fill light. That's a medium intensity light. And then you want to have a backlight or a hair light. And then you also have to worry about your green screen lighting. You want to have even lighting all around. This is the kind of setup that we use. I have three LED panels 
with diffusers on them and power so I can plug them in and they can all get powered at the same time off of one extension cord. So I have the set lights all together and all I need to do is turn on one switch and all my lights come on. Now, to get these setups, you can, you can go in and you can buy the whole kit if you want. Think about spending $150 to $250. Now, I got mine in pieces. I didn't get them all at once. I got them as I needed them. This is my mixer. It is a USB mixer. It was less than $100. It handles two XLR type microphones. I use the lavalier type microphones. And the way we do our show is we have multiple inputs. And in order for it to work without echoing with two computers and two microphones and another sound source, I have to put everything into, the, into my computer in one place. And that's what gives us the better sound. This is our studio, another picture that we have. And you can see I have a wall that's painted green behind me. I have a green screen that's, that's another setup. So I have basically two sets here with my lights. Notice that there's a Canon camera there on a tripod. You can also use a good DSLR camera for your main camera as a webcam using the Sparco Cam software that we've talked about here. One of our Toastmasters, Arlene, has done a very nice primer on how to use Sparco Cam. The camera itself, you gotta clean the lens. Notice right there with the dirty lens, it's fuzzy. With a clean lens, it's sharp and raise that camera to eye level. The technology that we use is free. YouTube live streaming is how we do our weekly show, our What Does This Button Do show. It allows multiple participants so we can get two computers running different systems, and we can even bring in guests. It's a wonderful tool to be able to use multiple cameras, we can do screen sharing, and it's free and it automatically records. If you want to get a little fancier, you can do some kind of webcasting software. This Zoom software works really, really well, but you don't have the kind of control over the audience selector that I have with YouTube live streaming. Facebook Live is something that we're doing every week, too. We do our Facebook Lives with an iPad instead of the computer, but we can also use the computer. You can do it anywhere. It's free. It's fun. And all you need to do is remember some of the, some of the basics for lighting and technology. Let's scooch out of here real quick. Okay. So we did have a couple of questions. All right. Here in the in the chat, can you share a description of the lighting package you shared in case we want to purchase it as a package online because Black Friday is coming up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, what I would have to do, I don't have that right now, but Neewer, N-E-E-W-E-R, lighting. If you go to Amazon and you check out Neewer, they have all of the equipment that you need there. Uh, Cowboy Studios is another system out there where you can buy the whole kit. So just do an Amazon search for studio lighting and you'll get these kits and they're anywhere between oh I'd say for the full kit for a full lighting kit with the diffusers and everything 150 to 250 dollars uh, you can get real fancy the camera that I use here 
for most of the stuff. And what most people tend to use is the Logitech, the C190. It has stereo microphones and it has a good lens and the software works great. The Sparco Cam is something that's really, really made this a lot of fun for me though, because you can have a green screen. And we talked about green screens. If I, that's my green screen right now. So all I need to do is choose the green and I can replace it with anything back there. One little issue that most people won't have is we wear these little hats and they have a green brim on them. That was a real problem. We had to figure out somehow to put some fabric over the brim so that our foreheads wouldn't disappear into the background. That looks like the Grand Canyon, Jim. That is the Grand Canyon. Pretty amazing, the stuff that you can do here. And you can even put video behind you too, right? I can. And let me show you some of that. And while you're doing that, somebody asked, what's the difference between a document camera and a regular camera? A document camera faces down. It's meant to take a, it's meant to display what's on the desk. And so it's facing down, but it's still feeding into the computer. So I put a phone on the desktop and the camera is getting that. Okay, so now I have a video in the background. It's a drone video that I took up in New Jersey back in August. So you can really get fancy with this technology if you want. You can do picture in picture. You can do, wow, all the different tools that you can use. Bottom line is you really want to have this thing set up and you need to practice the plan is is to make it look good with the right tools the right camera the right lighting the right software and the best bandwidth possible you too can do a beautiful presentation mr toastmaster oh wow all right. Well, I guess we're we're ready to. We got some questions over chat. Uh, I, I'll ask you the question I asked earlier. Uh, do, do you do you necessarily need to buy um, photographers' studio lighting, or would just uh, a bright office light, like a bright LED light, for for the for the office work? That's a good question. I would say typically you do want to buy the, the photographer's tools, the lighting, because what comes into effect there is, is called color temperature. Mm -hmm. and you have daylight and your white balance uh, needs to be set. And that's a function of the camera properties. So your better cameras will do white balance. Your, your cheaper cameras you might have to mess with in order to find any settings that'll do that. So you want to have the most natural lighting as possible. Some people say that if you have, you're setting up a studio, you want to blank out all of the natural lighting. You want to cover the windows. You don't want any of that. And you want to have all of your artificial lighting set to the proper color temperature. That way, when you set your white balance, everything will look natural. The tools that we use these days, these cameras, they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. And with just a couple of settings, you don't really need to have all of that fancy stuff. If you have tungsten lighting, regular regular incandescent lighting, you can adjust your camera for that. So no, you don't need to have that fancy stuff, but yes, it will make it look better if you do. Okay. I see another question in the chat here I can take. If, um, yeah, do you like an app like Visor for projecting your mobile device onto your screen share presentation? So there's yes and no. We use 
team viewer when we want to project the screen of the phone directly onto the computer, but then you don't see my fingers. And sometimes it's really important to see the fingers to understand what you're teaching on the phone. So the document camera shows everything that is going on. And secondly, adding a third piece of technology is just problematic. You know, just the more layers of technology you have, the more to go wrong. Right. Those tools typically will use some of your bandwidth too, and you want to have the most bandwidth available to the presentation when you're doing this. A live presentation is, has different considerations than just a recorded video. See, uh, I see, I'm going to mispronounce it again. Bouchon has, has raised his hand, I guess as a question. Go ahead and speak up. Yeah, I didn't want to type uh, type a question. I, I'm a I'm a verbal kind of a person. So Jim and Chris, this is amazing. This is putting me back in time when I used to do uh, presentations for my family and Toastmaster friends on things like this. But back in the days, my question to you is, why? Why are you doing this? This is so amazing. <laughs> that's, that's a great question. <laughs> well, there are a couple of reasons. The reason that we do this is because we can. The okay. technology is here. We are geeks. I was, I, I've been a geek for many, many years. I, we were, both came from the computer training industry. We had the first computer training center in South Florida, and she was the president of the Computer Trainers Association, International Computer Trainers Association. And so, Jim was that guy in high school, the AV guy, you know, yeah. with the glasses, <laughs> running with the, with the tray full of all the AV equipment from class to class and using the movie business, camera out. <laughs> our business is technology training for travelers. So this is, the, this is how we make our money. This is what we do to generate revenue. Hey, guys, actually, maybe you should explain briefly what you give away and what you sell because, because you, you don't, you don't uh, charge for people to come in and, and right. watch the, the button show on Sunday. Right. And I just think that's fascinating. We have made our living from a membership a subscription website for over 10 years now. And it started out saying everything that we wrote, all of our written material was freely available on the website. We only charged for our videos, which I made with Camtasia. They were recorded tutorial videos. Now in this YouTube generation, you can't. You, if we charged for our YouTube teaching, nobody would watch it. Nobody, period. So you have to get lots of people to watch it. So then what I do is I write up show notes. I write up detailed notes and links. And if you are a member of our website, you get those notes. So that's just a per you know, we just have to keep coming up with things that give members value. And we make our living from getting more members. Right. And I think it's, a, it's an example, the general principle that, that often you can give things away. If you give away good value, people are willing to, to pay to get the extra stuff, the, the good stuff, right? I, I think exactly. we actually could extend. I, I think we could, we could go a few more minutes, a, a few more questions, Ar Arlene. Uh, so, um, Adrian, were you trying to ask a question? I think Adrian may be unmuted by mistake, so I'm going to mute everybody again. Or attempt to. Alyssa um, has a question. Okay, go ahead. She says, do you need a special program for a mixer to mix everything together? Jim? I think you're, you're, we've got you muted too. So if you're trying to speak. Okay, sorry about that. The mixer that I use has some software that's included with it and that runs on the computer. Basically what, the reason that I use this mixer is that we have two computers on our regular show normally but if you have two in two different microphone inputs, 
then you're going to have issues with echo and, and bad sound. So I realized that if one computer is running the show and the other one is muted, now I can have both, both microphones and the other sound inputs going into the mixer and it mixing down into one input and that's what I send out to the, to the presentation. And do you have a uh, software or a piece of hardware that you use to switch between the video feeds as well? Because you, you'll be going back and forth between a couple of webcams, but then sometimes you also go to Chris's computer for screen sharing. Right. The way we set it up is Chris's computer is running the document camera software and the presentation slideshow that we have for every show. And that's sitting here on our desk. I'm sitting next to her running the Hangout on Air, the YouTube Live setup, and the cameras. And I can switch back and forth between the two computers, and each computer has a couple of different functions. So she handles her side of things, I handle my side of things, and I handle the audience selector. I determine what the audience is seeing through the show, through the presentation. Okay, and, and Lou Brown asked how much time you spend preparing for each episode, since what you're doing is live. I, Chris does all the work. That's, that's <laughs> me, yeah. You know, I, I prepare a lesson plan. I set up the show, I do the, I do the software setup as far as that stuff works. I make sure that everything's working, hopefully. It's Chris's job really to come up with the show. She comes the up- The content. The content, yeah, the topic that we're going to teach, how it's going to lay out. We, ha we have every one of these shows that we do is in three parts, just like a Toastmasters meeting. So we have a, a beginner's tip, and it usually includes some sort of a, an editing tip uh, for photo editing, and that's, that's a specialty of ours. And then we have the beginner's lesson. That's where we actually use the the photo box and she's showing the document camera showing the, the devices the smartphones and tablets and then we'll do an app of the week and because it's a live thing we can do chat and we can do take comments we can take questions live so we do the shows on sunday typically if we have bandwidth then we clean it up a little bit and thinking about that question though of how much time do I take it's an interesting because when I had prepared videos I got it down to it was one hour of my time per one minute of prepared video and that that's being pretty modest actually it's sometimes more than that at least one hour per one minute of prepared video doing it live it's less time because once you turn on that go live button that's it so I always do spend, I spend several hours preparing the material for the lesson, but you know, like a lesson plan, a teacher. But once we click go live, we go. So whatever time I spent, that's it. <laughs> Whereas recorded video, you can spend over and over and over. Okay, so Joe says he's asking about the Sparko cam and the in the chat, yes, that's the one that I'm talking about. And why a green screen? Well, it if it's done right, it can really make your any any location into a studio. Now you can have control over your background. You don't have to worry about noise, junk. I know some people that, that set up their studio just in a closet or in a small room, and all you need is the camera and the green screen and, and a good microphone and the software that, that will handle the green screening. And that's, that's just really all you I, need. I guess the idea is there's not too much green in, in your, your flesh tone, uh, usually. Uh, as Chris mentioned, it, you know, oh, yeah. you're wearing a green clothing. I, I think Hollywood used to use blue screens. Uh, that's yeah. that's what the Millennium Falcon was uh, standing in front of. My uh, green screen is reversible. Uh -huh. The other side is blue, okay. so it can it can uh, work either way. 
Actually, Ar Arlene, didn't you say, you, do you use blue a blue screen? Because I think you said something about your eye color or something. No, right. not my eyes, my hair. I, I guess my hair has green in it because huh? if I use a green screen, my hair is, so I use the blue one. Okay. All right. So Arlene, whatever the computer can cancel Arlene, out. Her, her timer, right? So yes, we're, on the timer. We, we did want to allow time for uh, table topics. How, how about one more question, though? Cause well, I see Deborah Carr has one in the, in the chat. She says, most of us work single and are not as tech savvy. What initially, other than computer iPhone, are the main things to consider investing in first? Well, the most, imp the most important thing is bandwidth, so internet connection. You need to have that. The next and most important thing is sound, so a good microphone. The microphone will make a difference in how much people, and then after that, it would be lights. Camera is the last. All right. Well, thank you, Jim and Chris. Uh, big uh, virtual applause for the Geeks on Tour this evening. <laughs>